are you looking to move to Florida but aren't really interested in those well-known cities like Miami or Fort Lauderdale? Maybe you want something more laid back, a place that feels like old Florida. Well, today I'm going to compare two of these laid back coastal towns in Northeast Florida just for you. But first, I wanna say welcome to my channel. If you've never been here before, I talk about life and real estate in St. Augustine, St. John's County, parts of Jack's and Palm Coast. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and comment with any questions you may have. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Reach out anytime with your questions. I'm always here to help. So when choosing where to relocate to, the first thing I always recommend is visiting the area to start. But there are other factors that will help you determine if it's the right place for you, and I'm hoping I can help with that. So today I'm going to compare two coastal cities in Northeast Florida, the city of Fernandina Beach versus the city of St. Augustine. These two towns are both historic and have a lot to offer someone looking to feel like they are on vacation year round. But of course there are some differences between them. But first, I do wanna mention that this comparison is of the two city districts, the city of Fernandina Beach and the city of St. Augustine for its walkability and in-town type of lifestyle. Let's start with the city of Fernandina Beach, which is located on the northernmost eastern tip of Florida, basically on the Florida-Georgia border, stretching over about 12.62 miles and is situated on Amelia Island with a population of around 12,622 residents. It was voted number one in best places to live in Nassau County, according to Niche.com. An hour and a half south is the city of St. Augustine. is comparable in size to Fernandina Beach, stretching over 12.74 miles, but has a slightly higher population of just over 15,000 residents. One difference is that the city of Fernandina Beach includes the sandy beaches on the Atlantic Ocean, where the city of St. Augustine doesn't quite make it to the Atlantic waters, but it does come close within Anastasia State Park. And of course, even though the beach is not part of the city district, it is super close. When it comes to things to do in St. Augustine and Fernandina Beach, both have a lot to offer. Both have very cute downtown areas with great walkability to shops and restaurants. Both of these cities are surrounded by water and are ideal for boating with easy access to oceans, rivers, and creeks. So if you love to fish, boat, or kayak, either location will do. But if you require a marina slip for your boat, St. Augustine definitely offers more options than Fernandina Beach with its very large mooring field, municipal docks, as well as four other marinas. They also have a few places you can haul your boat as well as some boat ramps. Fernandina does have a couple of marinas such as Fernandina Harbor with all new docks and Tiger Point which offers a lift to haul your boat. There are a few moorings in the harbor as well and both cities offer ample room for anchoring but they also have some major currents. So if you are a boater, you will wanna take that into consideration. And of course, the most important thing to mention is both cities have an inlet to the ocean which is really important to sport fishermen who like to go out to the ocean to go fishing. Now, if you are looking to retire to one of these cities, either will offer you an active and fun lifestyle. The median age in Fernandina Beach is 55 versus the city of St. Augustine where the median age is 48. I would say there is more going on in St. Augustine than Fernandina in regards to entertainment. St. Augustine definitely has more music venues, festivals, restaurants, and bars. St. Augustine is known for its vast history and architecture having a Spanish and European influence and being the oldest city in the country, but both of these cities are historic. As a matter of fact, both of these coastal cities have a historic fort. Fernandina Beach's Fort Clinch is a short bike ride away from the downtown area and is situated right on the St. Mary's Inlet with sweeping views of the ocean and north of Cumberland Island. This area is filled with history. You can take a tour of the fort and see some reenactments, as well as bike or walk the trails within the park, or spend the day on the inlet beach. I've done it and it's absolutely worth it. St. Augustine's Fort San Marcos de Castillo is located right downtown on the bayfront with beautiful views of the Matanzas River. You can take a tour of the fort where you can immerse yourself in a virtual experience watch the firing of the cannons over the bayfront, or bring a picnic lunch and sit on the grounds. This fort is a must-see as well, but for me, Fort Clinch is more my style. I think because it sits on the Atlantic and is surrounded by trails and a natural hammock of oaks. Although San Marcos de Castillo is right in downtown St. Augustine, so it makes it super easy to just kind of go get some drinks, lunch, or go to another attraction. Now, living in a historic city is wonderful. It's walkable, so you have easy access to shops and restaurants, but of course, you will have to deal with tourism throughout the year. If you are looking to purchase in either of these cities, you will find homes varying in style from Victorian to mid-century to newer home styles. In Fernandina Beach, the median sale price 
in mid 2022 for a single family home is 643,000 and oceanfront condos are 724,000. When it comes to condos, you will definitely find more luxurious options on the beach with ocean views while in the city of St. Augustine, there aren't as many condo complexes, but there is one downtown right on the river. So some of those condos do have a beautiful view of the Matanzas and some older condos just north and west, but mainly you have more single family home options where the median sale price is 677,000 and 430,000 for a condo. Both areas are great spots for a vacation rental, but short-term rental property owners will need to get permits and will be required to pay bed taxes. The city of St. Augustine has a restriction of one rental per seven day period in zones RS1 and RS2. In Fernandina Beach, to own what they call a resort rental, your property has to be in zone RS3 unless you were grandfathered in prior to that restriction going into effect. And for more information, reach out and I'll get you all the info you need to get you started. One thing I do think is worth mentioning is that Fernandina Beach has a paper plant within the city district and it's located right on the intercoastal waterway. So depending on how the wind is blowing, you will smell it. But I think the people who live there get used to it eventually. If this is something you know you wouldn't get used to, then Fernandina Beach may not work for you. With that being said, let's dive into food. <laughs> Where are my foodies out there? Either of these towns have a lot of great options. Fernandina Beach has something for everyone, ranging from seafood, Asian, Mediterranean, and Italian. Plus, there are some really nice brunch options. A must try for dinner is Espana Restaurant and Tapas, which offers full meals and small plates, perfect for sharing. I was there for my birthday last year and it was fantastico. St. Augustine has some great options as well, and it has everything ranging from Italian, South American, seafood, sushi, you name it, they have it. We have a lot of food truck options as well. A few of my favorite sit down and dine restaurants in the city district are St. Augustine Fish Camp and River and Fort. And if you're looking for a delicious, healthy option, Crave's a local favorite and has everything from green smoothies to vegan options. What about shopping? Fernandina Beach offers many specialty shops. My favorite is Trailer Park Treasures. It has lots of old, new, and handmade items from furniture to jewelry. And Twisted Sisters is a pretty cool little shop too, but there are plenty of other boutique shops to enjoy as well as art galleries. The city of St. Augustine is chock full of unique shops and boutiques that are bound to fit every type of person from jewelry to clothing and soaps to olive oils. The Coconut Apparel is one of my favorites and offers one of a kind products made by local artists, designers, and crafters. When it comes to big box stores like Home Depot or Target in either one of these cities, you do need to drive out of the city district about 10 to 15 minutes to find what you need. When it comes to healthcare, Baptist Medical Center in Nassau in Fernandina Beach is a highly advanced and extremely well-equipped community hospital that provides a full spectrum of in and out patient services and 24-hour emergency care. Based on the LeapFrog Group standards, this hospital scored 120 out of 120 possible points, making it the highest ranked hospital in the area. When considering healthcare in the St. Augustine area, Flagler Hospital is the highest ranked hospital in St. Augustine. It has been named one of America's 100 best hospitals in 2020 by health grades. They are considered a total healthcare enterprise and is a one-stop shop for all your medical needs. Now it's not located within the city district, but it's easy access. There's also plans for a Baptist Health to be built in the new complex on State Road 207 close to 95 for outpatient services. <laughs> Lastly, let's talk about school districts. The city of St. Augustine is within St. John's County, which is the top school district in Florida, but the schools within the city district of St. Augustine and Fernandina Beach both rank A minus, so either is a good option. So which one sounds like a better fit for you, Fernandina or St. Augustine? I would love to know your thoughts, so comment below. If there's something I didn't cover, let me know and I'd be happy to answer your questions. I know it can be difficult to relocate to a new area, so visiting is step number one, but I do have a relocation guide, which could be a helpful way to start your research and you'll find the link in the description below for instant access. I love connecting with people and helping them navigate a new place. So don't hesitate to reach out or comment below with your questions. If you found this information helpful, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button to keep up to date on my latest videos. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you on the next one.